Okay, so what we're going to do today is we are going to commission a logger 1000. Now, this one has been set up that there are grid inverters and hybrid inverters connected to the same logger and a meter. Now, you can see here in the little drawing I've got uh, that the grid inverters are connected on one channel and the meter on another channel and the hybrids on the third RS485 channel. You do have to keep them on different channels. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the basic commissioning. Obviously, if the system is a bit more complicated, talk to us first. Uh, the other thing I'll point out is that these inverters have been initialized and they have been set to the Australian grid standard. You do need to do that first. Uh, please check the videos on that one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi settings and I'm going to scan and I'm going to find the Wi-Fi signal of the logger 1000 which is this serial number here so I'm going to connect onto that there and while that's connecting I'm going to open up a browser any browser so you go into the address bar and you type https colon slash slash like that and then 11.11.11.1 .11 and enter and that is the address of there we go. Now, depending on the settings you've got on your computer, obviously you might get this thing here. If you do that, just click on advanced there and actually proceed to that. It's quite safe. So we just proceed and that will connect to our logger 1000. So we'll just wait on that connecting. It'll take a moment. And there we are, we are connected. Okay, now your initial login is uh, maintain, maintain all lower, uh, lower case and PW1111. I'm just going to click on there so you can see PW lowercase 1111 login and it will log us in. Now the first thing it's going to do, if it doesn't do this, don't worry, uh, it is going to ask us to change the password. So we will do that. So the old password is PW1111. And for the sake of this, I'm going to make it, uh, you do have to be alphanumeric. So sun grow 2025, like that. And I'll just check I've done it properly by clicking there. Yep, and this one here, sun, I'll do that again. Sun grow 2025. It will give me a warning if, if I don't do them the same. And then save. Okay, so I need to log back in again. It's logged me out. So uh, maintain and sun grow 2025. And there we go. Now that'll take me to the setup wizard because this has never been set up before. That's fine. That's what we want. Okay, so on the screen you will see uh, network status, you'll see the logger, and on you'll see it'll say false and there's no connection to iSolar Cloud, that's correct. Now there are three options here, uh, cellular, WLAN, Ethernet. I have done a separate uh, video on the cellular network. Uh, if you are using net Ethernet, make sure you are connected with the Ethernet and you'll go in there. There's two options. You can either open up the DHCP, which means the modem will assign the IP address to it, or you can actually use static IP addresses. Now, you will need to talk to the customer, uh, the IT person, to see what IP addresses they want to assign to this. And you'll also need to speak to them about firewalls and all that. So, uh, if it's a small commercial and they don't really know what to do just use the DHCP that's fine and anyway, we're not going to use that so I'm going to shut that down I am going to use WLAN in this case so I click on WLAN and I I switch the WLAN on now this will scan for networks on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency which is what we use and that's the one I'm looking for here that's our network here so I'm going to click that and I'm going to put in the password Like so, I can little click on this little thing just to make sure I've got it right and then save. Now that will take a few moments to connect to the network, but at the moment all we're doing is connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Okay, so we'll let that uh, scan for a few moments. 
There we go, operation successful. So we've done that, we just close this down by clicking this box here. And we have the Wi-Fi connected, that's fine. That's all we need to do at the moment. Now just scroll down here and just click this enable remote maintenance box. Uh, it looks like it might have connected to something, but it might not be the Australian server. That's fine, don't worry about that at the moment. Uh, click next. Now what this will do when you boot uh, the logger up, it will scan automatically for inverters and what we can see here it is already scanned for these four and picked up these four inverters and some battery information there on the hybrids so that the communication is working well if they don't all appear if they, if any of them are missing you are going to have to rescan so what i'd suggest you do is shut the logger down shut the inverters down and recheck your rs485 wiring now for all the details on that, obviously consult the training uh, videos and documents on RS-485. Now it will ask you, see this here, it'll come up and it'll remind you, to import the grid settings into the logger. You just click this here and it will do a quick scan, Australia, Australia A, that's correct. And we just click settings and it will give me four confirmations when it reads, there's one. There's two, there's three, and there's four. So I'll get four confirmations that it's reading that the Australian uh, settings are correct. Okay, now if you scroll down here, you'll see meter. Now obviously if you don't have a meter, don't worry about that, but it just says meter zero. I'm going to have to add the meter. So I go into add a device, and I'm going to select Scroll down, select meter, access type. In most cases, you're looking at a gateway meter. I believe LGCs, you might be enabling this one, but in this case here, we're monitoring the mains. So gateway meter is what we select. Port, uh, as per the drawing, the meter is connected to A1, uh, sorry, A2B2, which is COM2. That's correct. Uh, the device is, uh, we have connected a DTSU 666-20, so I'm going to select that. And being a meter, I need to always set the address to 254 on SunGrow meters. Other meters might be different, okay, but the SunGrow meters are addressed 254. Save operation successful. And I can scroll down here and I just to double check. There we go, there's the meter and we've got the green communication light, so that's fine. Okay, next. And we want to create the iSolar Cloud Plant. Okay, you can do this previously, if you like, by scanning the QR code on the dongle. You can do it that way, or you can do it this way. So we're going to call the plant uh, SunGrow AU Test Warehouse, because that's where we are. The plant type is going to be a residential storage because we have batteries. Power, we've got about 100 kilowatts on the roof here, so I'll put that in there. Uh, country, Australia, time zone, uh, you need to scroll down a wee bit to get the time zone. We should be about plus 10 and a half or something. Here, I'll find out Brisbane, there we are, Canberra, Melbourne, Sydney, depending where you are, click on there. Put the address in, so we are 87 to 91. Uh, Victoria, whoops, Victoria Street, Smithfield, I've spelled that wrong, that's alright, Victoria Street, Smithfield, uh, New South Wales, 2164, so I'll just double check that spelling, hang on. So 87 to 91 Victoria Street, Smithfield, New South Wales, 264. Uh, you may be required to put the NMI in there, depending on where you are, what you're doing. I don't have that at the moment, that's fine. Uh, installer, you have to put the email addresses in there. So, power.com.au, oops, that's my uh, email address. And the owner will just make it test at sungrow.com. That's a bogus email. Okay, and the notification emails will come through, so we just go next. Uh, 
and operation successful. Now this is the overview and you can actually download a report by clicking that, not going to do. So let's have a look. Uh, we've got four inverters, the serial numbers and of course Australia A and that will all be on the report in case the inspector needs to see it. And it's got all sort of information about the plant and we're on WLAN, etc, etc. Okay, so you complete like so. Okay, now there's a couple of other things you will have to do and some things you might have to do. So we're going to go in. Now, if you look down the bottom here of this menu, you'll see I've got Wi-Fi and a cloud. So it is talking to the cloud, but it hasn't yet been set for the Australian server. So you need to click on system forwarding configuration and you will see here, there's a settings uh, gear wheel there, advanced settings, click on there, go into server and select Australian server and save. Okay, confirm. So that's just going to communicate with the Australian server. Uh, go into remote maintenance just to make sure it has been enabled and Australian server and it is yeah it has connected so that's fine I'm just going to save that anyway it should be saved but I'll just make doubly sure okay that'll take a moment and we'll just confirm like that and you can download you can email any information you like as well I'm not going to do that okay now top right hand corner you'll see here it's got the, the login the language and it says data logger because we have hybrids connected we're going to make it an energy management system there we go now that operates slightly differently because it has hybrids and batteries but you may still need to set the export control so we're going to power control active power and you select here local power power control and closed loop that basically means it's a wired meter okay now <coughs> power limit in case of meter communication anomaly uh, this is in case for some reason the meter loses communication uh, for example a 100 kilowatt system and you might want to set the maximum export at 60 kilowatts which is what we're going to do here that would be 60 percent of the entire output so what this will do is if it loses communication with the meter it will ramp the system system down to basically 60 kilowatts okay uh, you can leave pretty much anything else as default uh, and you go down here and it's set to kilowatts but you can do it as a percentage but 60 kilo, uh, kilowatts is normal and we'll just enter 60 in there and save Okay, so that's the system basically set. Now there is another uh, couple of settings that you may have to do. Okay, um, if you're using a DTSD 1352 meter with five amp secondary CTs, you will need to set the CT ratio. In this case here, if we click on the DTSU 666 and initial parameter, you'll see that it's defaulted to 100. That's fine. So it's automatically set. If you were using CTs, for example, 400 amp CTs, and it's a five amp secondary, 400 divided by five is 80, I think, you would have to set the ratio at 80 in there. And don't forget to save there. But pretty much that's everything. Uh, all you would need to do for a basic commissioning. We can have a, a look at the device list, uh, make sure everything's there, make sure everything's communicating, that's correct. Um, Go to overview, general information, you can see that the system's running, all the rest of it, that's fine. Uh, for all the full information, obviously check, make sure that it is on the iSolar Cloud. It will take a few minutes for the data to get up properly on iSolar Cloud, so be patient with that one. Um, but five, ten minutes and it should be fine. You should be able to go into the iSolar Cloud and monitor the system. And that's a basic setup for a hybrid and grid system on the Logger 1000.